Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and welcome to 15 Minutes of Game. Today, I introduce to you cute things dying violently. Yeah, I'm gonna admit it. I looked at this game solely on the basis of the title. Seriously, it helps. <laughs> Distinguish your game from everything in every way you can, including dumb titles. Thank you very much. Might make me a little bit more interested. Also, I'm a black-hearted bastard, so it's worth bearing that in mind. If I am a enabled to slaughter cute creatures in amusing ways, I will do it if given the opportunity. This is a game by Apathy Works, which is available on Steam, iOS, and the App Store for a grand total of $3, not exactly expensive. It comes with a level editor and Steam Workshop support, which is always nice, give it a little bit of playability, and it is for the most part a physics-based flick cute creatures, hopefully not to their death, but sometimes for hilarity simulator. It gets 15 minutes of game, as does any other, and its time begins now. All right, here we go. So I've done the first few levels just to get the tutorial. Not much of a tutorial for this game, I have to admit. Not much that you really need to know. It's quite simple. Oh, okay, fair enough. Some levels require mono one or more critters to be sacrificed. Sometimes that means they have to miss the elevator. Other times that means they get sent to the flying spaghetti monster in the sky. Disgusting Reddit propaganda. Not impressive. Okay. So you can move the little critters around by holding the left mouse button and you can flick them in a direction using the right mouse button. You have to get as many of them through into the elevator door as humanly possible. In this case, in order to... Oh, oops. Uh, I, I really kind of shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Never mind. It's fine. Not a big deal. I'm not going for high score here. So you flick them in that direction, you open the door, and then you put them in the door. Easy. Not a problem. In order to get perfect score on the level, you need to sacrifice the minimum number of critters, needless to say, and you also need to turn off the trajectory indicator, just to make matters even more annoying. All right, we're going to bounce it off a wall then, so we need to activate that and preferably not horribly murder the critter. Not that I really mind horribly murdering the critter, in fact, I'm actually fine with that for the most part. I have accepted that, and I'm sure they have also accepted their inevitable fate. There we go, and nice and easy for the most part, except for the fact we now have to bounce them off there. There we go. Oops. Nice and easy, he says, as he throws that to its death. I think you get the idea, don't you? So the question is, how does it control? Because I am always cautious when it comes to titles that were originally on mobile devices. Bloody hell, really? There we go. Always cautious. And rightfully so, because so many of them are awful when it comes to controls. I mean, for God's sake, we had that Frozen game, the Match 3 game, released without mouse support, which is a joke, by the way, an absolute joke. For the most part, it controls fine, although... Huh. I thought that was going in. Evidently not. The problem I've got is that... If you play the game in windowed mode, which I prefer to play games like this in windowed mode where possible, if you drag the arrow off the screen, particularly if the critters are very low on the screen and close to the bottom of the window, you can't necessarily get the angle you want, which is somewhat irritating, I must admit. Hmm. You know, the trajectory indicator kind of showed that I was going to go over that, I thought, but evidently not. There we go. I mean, that should work. That worked fine. There we go. I probably just wasn't looking correctly. All right, off you go, and nice and easy, through you go. Yes, I mean, the controls work fine for the most part. It's just, like I said, in windowed mode on levels where the critters are close to the bottom of the window, or indeed just close to the window in general, you can have difficulty getting the right angle as a result of that. Like, a demonstration here, like, if I scroll down to the bottom here, outside of the window, the arrow actually gets stuck, which is not brilliant. And we're in a boss fight. All right, then. Dragon flick bombs, just like the critter. Okay, that sounds good to me. All right, so this is a neat little boss fight. I, I like this idea, as opposed to just having the game do the same thing every time. Although you've got to get the timing right on these bombs, which is kind of tricky. What happens if I flick the critter at it? Not much, okay. There we go, that should do it. It's a nice idea. Nice little twist on things. All right, come on. Oh, now, he, now you're dropping too. All right, that's kind of mean. And our timing was completely off as well. Never mind. And there's not really much to learn, I guess, in this title. It's 
gonna be doing the same thing over and over and over again and just making it more complex every time. Although I do like the idea that it does have a level editor. That would hopefully add a decent amount of replayability to the title. Oops. <sighs> Damn. That is tricky. Come on. Three, four, I think time is about right. That should do it. Yeah, there we go. Let's have a health bar, that would be good. Although I suppose you can figure it out based on the number of bombs he bloody well throws at you. Hope I timed that one right. We did. Good. It's a simple game. It is a casual game, for the most part. Although I have a feeling it could get ludicrously tricky after a while. There we go. It has quite a lot of levels, about 50, I believe. And of course, having the level editor means that it will hopefully have a little bit more to show for itself after a while, assuming people even pick up on it. I mean, so far, so good, really. You don't really expect too much from a title like this, I suppose. You can only manipulate objects where there's light. Ah, okay. Sneaky. So it is gradually increasing the complexity here. The jokes are a bit dodgy. I <laughs> can't say I'm hugely keen on those. Uh, and there we have the windowed problem again. I'm hoping... That's not going to go far enough now, is it? I was trying to pull it back even further, but I can't because it's at the bottom of this bloody screen. Oh, that is infuriating. I don't know if I can even beat this level in windowed mode as a result. I think I might even have to go... There we go. We can get it over. It would actually be easier if I went into full screen here. That should never really be the case, as far as I'm concerned. That's okay. There we go. I mean, for what it is, though, outside of that little problem, I guess it's fine. This is a utility crate. You can move it, flick it, and have it interact with other... Yes. Okay. So you can also manipulate the springs. So you can throw that around if you want. So I suppose you could throw it in that direction and then use the crate to activate that, perhaps? Maybe. Yeah, things just got a lot more complicated now that you can actually move things on the level. I do kind of appreciate that, actually. Otherwise, it would be a very, very simplistic game, but it's starting to kind of pick up a little bit. Can I get it to bounce all the way up there? It looked like I can, but again, with the sodding bottom of the bloody thing again. The trajectory indicator isn't perfect, I've noticed. So we got the spring up there, so we could probably just bounce. Nope, we don't have enough momentum going into that. That should work, right? In theory? Nope. Hmm. You think we'd go to higher than that, really? Oh. Well, this is a bit of a bind. <laughs> Perhaps that was a poor choice. If I got the timing right, it's still fine, though. We have a solution, don't worry. Oh, bloody hell. Mostly we have a solution. Quit screwing it up for your fellow critters. He's a bastard, really. When it Jesus. Let them in. Just because you're doomed to an eternal existence of pain and punishment doesn't mean these guys have to be. You know what? I'm just going to kill you as a result of that. You deserve that. You really did. Oh, now, oh, now what? <laughs> it has fans now. Okay. I'll give it credit. It's actually introducing mechanics at a pretty rapid rate. I wonder how often it's going to be able to do that, though. All right, fan is now off. I don't think I want the fan off, though, do I? Can I turn it back on now? Oh, oops. <laughs> Didn't quite mean to do that. Never mind. No, I actually can't. So turning that off seems like a pretty poor idea, all things considered. I could maybe bounce them over using the spring, I guess. If I put it in the right place, but... God, aiming that is gonna be... extremely tricky. Oh, wow, there you go. We got one. Thankfully, it only takes one to get through to the next level if you don't care about getting a perfect score, so that works for me. What would be nice is if I could try out the levels at the very end. We are currently on stage two. We've almost finished stage two. It's been pretty rapid progress up to this point, actually. This is the level select, as you can see. So there's five other areas there with eight levels each. 
give this one a shot then. Oh, what on earth? Breakable walls, all right. And bombs. I mean, it's, it's almost like it's introducing the uh, concepts too quickly, but I have a feeling that you are absolutely going to be able to beat this game relatively fast. And they're probably going to be relying on user-created levels for the majority of the content. Probably just introducing new content as they go. I mean, it is a mobile game for all intents and purposes, so the way that those are usually updated is they will throw in extra levels to keep people interested and keep the thing high in the charts. I have no idea how you get through this. Now, I need a bomb. It said there are breakable walls. I don't know if you can break them with the crate or anything like that. I probably should have read that tutorial message, shouldn't I? You know, let, let's uh, let's do that, shall we? Those are bombs. Trigger them and they explode. Okay, so I can just... So I trigger them with the red button. Okay, that makes sense. Fair enough, then. So how on earth? I guess you can probably spring it up there, maybe? Possibly. Possibly not. The trajectory indicator goes bonkers at times. You notice that? It actually was nowhere near accurate. I think it's affected by the fans on the level. <clears throat> and as a result, it doesn't give you a proper indicator, which is not ideal. Hmm. Can't say I'm a huge fan of that. So I think I can get it up there, perhaps. But can I do it without... <laughs> This- this is not helpful, game. This is not in any way helpful. <laughs> what a difficulty spike. Crazy. I wonder if I can shoot it out there. Can I shoot it up there and then deactivate the fans while I do it? Like, is it possible to time that? Uh, possibly, but I screwed it up. I wonder if you're supposed to do that, though. Sodding hell. I don't think you can. It seems like there's a bit of a delay on the action. Oh, no, you can do it. Oh, bloody hell. No, 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 no! Hmm. Do you then have to turn the other fan off? God. This game suddenly got really, really hard really fast. Surprisingly so, actually. Oh. This... this problem with the window that oh come on what a difficulty spike good lord oh my god i mean i would think you could get it up there i think you still get the fan momentum regardless of what happens so i think maybe you've just got to disable that first and bounce it up there you can do it that way maybe No! Hopeless. Hopeless. Come on. Just, just get up there. This might be the level on which we get stuck. Still too much. If only that trajectory indicator was even remotely useful. That would be nice. I'd be a fan of that. It worked fine up until this level, and now it basically just breaks as a result of the fan and the wind that's sort of pushing these guys around a bit, which is a bit of a shame. Because it's, it's an interesting level, like, it's quite creative, but it's now turned into a goddamn nightmare. And what a huge spike in difficulty this is. Oh, come on. This might be where I stop the video, because I cannot go... Any further, I think. No, nope, we're good. We're good. Okay. Don't go that. Just why? Why won't it let me flick it again? Does it not let you flick it if you're in a fan? I guess that must be it. That must be the reason why you can't do that. Mm hmm. Is that right or not? Probably not. Oh, the amount of precision required, and yet the amount of precision the game does not give you. Oh, you bastard. Why would you do such a thing?
I am thoroughly losing the plot now. Okay, so we'll do that. <laughs> Switch it around. Even though it said it was high enough, it wasn't. No, okay then. Yeah, they gotta fix that. They really do. It's a nightmare to play it without a proper indicator. Okay, now switch it over. There we go. Oh, now what? Now what? Now I don't know what what next. How do you even get past those spikes? Do you like send the crate up there first? I I don't know. Well, as I said, that is a crazy difficulty spike for this title. Uh yeah. Conclusion. Hmm. I think I actually skipped a few levels by the looks of it. Yeah, I did. I actually skipped a few. It let me access that, but that's still, in three levels, a huge difference in difficulty there. So, conclusion on it. It's, a, it's an interesting idea, which for the most part works pretty well. For the most part. The trajectory indicator and the problems with windowed mode really, really need to be fixed. They really do because they make finding exactly what you're supposed to be doing a heck of a lot trickier than it has any right to be. It does have a lot of interesting components, which make me think that the Steam Workshop scene for this game could actually end up being pretty good, which is quite surprising, perhaps, for a lot of people. that They, they wouldn't necessarily see think a casual mobile title would actually have much of that. But it seems like there's quite a lot of potential in that level editor. In fact, we should probably just dive into the level editor and just have a quick look at it. Let's do that. I just want to see what kind of functionality it's got and what kind of devices you can mess around with. There's, they've got levels of the week here as well. So that's pretty cool. So if we go into the level editor, create new level. Da -da 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 -da. All right. How on earth? I, I've never been particularly good at level editors, I have to admit. Okay, we're using that. All right, so this is what you've got. You can put the bots in by the looks of it. Bubble makers, oil drums, colored blocks, different kinds of stop signs, springs, buttons, glass. I think there's a good, there's a good amount of room for creativity here, honestly. An impressive amount. What would be nice is if you could duplicate these blocks and didn't have to drag them out every bloody time, though. That seems like it will probably limit people's desire to create more. As you can see, because you have to keep dragging it and dragging it and dragging it if you want to do that. But I think there's potential here, actually. For a $3 game, there's a decent amount of content, certainly, if you're into this sort of thing. Personally, I find the damn thing unbelievably frustrating, but that is to be expected. It's not a bad little budget physics-based platformer thingy, I suppose. Puzzle game. It's not too shabby for three bucks. Could use some fine-tuning, certainly. And we'll see how the level editor scene ends up developing, if at all. Cute things dying violently, ladies and gentlemen. Available for $3 on Steam, also on iOS and Android. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.